Uh, good afternoon. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here with you to present an update on uh, Longevron. Um, uh, just to start uh, with a description of our product, we are a manufacturer of uh, bone, bone marrow-derived allogeneic mesenchymal stem cells. These are derived from healthy young donors, culture expanded to high purity and viability through a propriety process that we've developed and licensed from the University of Miami. Um, we have a research and cell processing facility in Miami at the Life Sciences and Technology Park. We opened this facility in 2017. It has 10 clean room suites for production. We have uh, both human and veterinary production, uh, analytic laboratories, and a research and development areas. We are able to manufacture for all of our clinical trials as well as to do some contract manufacturing. Um, uh, our focus is uh, chronic age-related diseases and life-threatening conditions with one exception, which is a, uh, or, an ultra-orphan uh, condition in, in neonates. Um, we are at a clinical stage. We have a robust pipeline of INDs and have an international presence. Uh, what I'm going to talk about most this afternoon is our Aging Frailty program, which is a unique program of tremendous high met need, and our development of cell therapy in this area is, is very important because not, not only are we developing cell therapy, but we are one of the lead companies in the world developing any kind of biological therapy for aging frailty altogether. As a subsidiary uh, uh, protocol, we're also looking at uh, immunosenescence in the elderly and have a protocol to look at immune responses to see if mesenchymal stem cell therapy can boost these responses. As I mentioned, we have an ultra rare. Uh, there we go. We have an ultra rare program as well in hypoplastic left heart syndrome, which affects uh, fewer than uh, 1,000 children in the United States. We're also uh, studying Alzheimer's disease and metabolic syndrome. I'll touch on um, uh, to extent later in the talk our program in Japan, and also mention that we have an approval in bah in the Bahamas for an open-label registry uh, clinical trial. Um, our, in addition to uh, investor funding, we are the beneficiary of a significant amount of non-dilutive uh, grant support, and we're pleased to report that every one of our clinical trials at this, uh, at this stage is externally funded. Our frailty program is funded by uh, a, a recent award from the NIA for $3.83 million plus an award from TEDCO, which is the State of Maryland uh, fund. A metabolic program is funded by NIA, our hypoplastic left heart syndrome funded by TEDCO, and our Alzheimer's program funded by the uh, Alzheimer's Association. Our total uh, external grant funding, which is non-dilutive, is $7.48 million. Uh, this shows the growth of our uh, grant funding, which has uh, been exciting for us because it validates not only our ability to continue these trials, but also is a scientific in endorsement of our approach. Uh, these are our significant uh, near-term uh, milestones. As I mentioned, all of these trials are enrolling. We will complete enrollment of the phase two immunosenescence and flu vaccine trial uh, early next year. It's a 43-patient trial. In late 2019, early 2020, we expect to complete our phase one Alzheimer's trial, our phase one hypoplastic left heart trial, and in early 2020, our phase 2B trial of aging frailty subjects, which will be a total of 150 patients. So I just want to spend a few minutes talking about the aging frailty syndrome. It is somewhat of a confusing topic in the medical field. I will just mention it, uh, frailty is not a inevitable consequence of aging, and this is a biologically recognized syndrome by the geriatric community. And one of the lead areas of research for the National Institutes of Aging, both in the United States and in Japan. Um, this is uh, uh, some data about life expectancy. I think there's been a lot of interest in biotechnology now in anti-aging therapies, but we're taking a slightly more granular look at the field by addressing a frailty in specific, and I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, We have pretty good data about lifespan through the year 1500, and it's very interesting. It remained constant until the late 1800s, where there's this dramatic 
increase in uh, longevity. It's doubled since the late 1880s in most, and a, a lifespans incre increasing throughout the world. It does not appear to be slowing down. And in fact, the scientific evaluations estimate that maximum human lifespan may be about 125 years. Uh, what's interesting about this is as longevity increases, we have a, an ongoing problem that is also increasing, which is that the latter years of life are years of, de of disability and, and morbidity. And in fact, the countries that have the longest lifespan also have the longest period. So in the United States, it's estimated that the last 11 years of your life will be years living with disability. So to us, this is the therapeutic target, not necessarily to increase lifespan, but to increase health span. Um, so what is the uh, underpinning of, of uh, aging and frailty? Uh, it's thought to be, represent chronic low-grade inflammation that leads to DNA and organelle dysfunction. It's associated with stem and progenitor cell dysfunction reservoirs in the body and the accumulation of senescent cells. Um, now, aging frailty, as I mentioned before, is not an in inevitable consequence of aging, but in fact, some individuals are aging successfully and others have accelerated aging as depicted in this graph. And the biology I mentioned in the previous slide is the underpinning of, of frailty. So a frail individual may live as long as a, as a person with full performance, but may uh, suffer a disability for a longer period of time. In other words, a longer period of poor health span. And to us, this is the important therapeutic target. Um, this is a busy slide, and I won't uh, go through it in detail. It is published. This is Linda Freed's concept published in uh, about uh, over 15 years now that uh, talks about the frailty cycle. It begins with inflammation that leads to loss of muscle mass, sarcopenia, that has um, uh, current um, phenotypic effects in the human that leads to disability and dependency. Now, the issue of inflammation and sarcopenia are the issues that mesenchymal stem cells specifically can address therapeutically by having targeted and specific anti-inflammatory effects as well as pro-regenerative effects that can offset the sarcopenia. Um, we have conducted uh, two clinical trials. The data are published. I'll allude to those studies. But just to summarize why uh, what the rationale for using mesenchymal stem cells for aging frailty and the findings as published in the trials. So the, the uh, rationale is to target and reduce the inflammation, to address stem cell repletion, to enhance endogenous repair mechanisms through immunomodulation and rest restoration of myocardial dysfunction, mitochondrial dysfunction. In clinical trials, we found that the LMSCs have a powerful anti-inflammatory effect as measured by TNF-alpha levels and other markers, improve cardiac and endothelial function, improve immune functioning, improve st strength, balance, and endurance, as well as in enhancing cognitive function. And it's for these reasons and these findings that, we've ad that we have clinical trials addressing not only frailty, but also Alzheimer's disease. So just to go back to the uh, pathophysiologic depiction, um, we believe that our LMSCs can, um, can interrupt this pathway by reducing inflammation, restoring and offsetting the loss of muscle mass and sarcopenia, and therefore offsetting the loss of strength and power, walking speed and activity that people experience with uh, declining age. These are our publications published about a year ago in the uh, Journal of Gerontology. The citations are so near, and we could certainly make those available to you. I will mention that there was an editorial in the, uh, in the uh, in concurrent issue that uh, concluded that the results are striking and at a minimum paved the way for large randomized uh, phase three uh, clinical trials. We were excited about these comments because our approach represents not only a regenerative medicine approach, but the only approach to try to address the biological underpinnings of frailty. Uh, this is a major, major problem worldwide. It's estimated that in the United States, 15% of people above the age of 65 have overt frailty, and another 21 million are pre-frail. So about 50%, more than 50% of the population of greater than 65 years 
have frailty and have no current medical or biological uh, therapies available to them. Um, because of the demographics uh, in Asia, and particularly in Japan, we took an interest at the onset of founding of the company in taking our program to Japan. We have uh, had several consultations with the uh, Japanese PMDA. We've had um, an official face-to-face -face clinical meeting. The minutes were issued about a year ago. And we've had additional uh, quality uh, me uh, meetings with the PMDA. An official meeting minutes were issued in March of 2018. We are poised to do a uh, clinical trial in Japan that will dovetail with our United States program. And we are presently in uh, discussions uh, regarding funding and development with potential partners in Japan. So our, to sum up our corporate uh, snapshot, we are a cellular therapy development manufacturing uh, program, a company in Miami. We are four years old. Our lead product is a bone marrow-derived allogeneic mesenchymal stem cell. It is manufactured uh, by ourselves in our own facility through a, um, uh, um, a, a, a protected uh, a pr production technique. We have four ongoing clinical trials in phase one and two development. As I mentioned, our headquarters are in Miami, uh, Florida. We have 16 employees. Our funding is uh, presently through equity sale, grant awards, and early stage uh, revenue streams through our program in the Bahamas and through contract manufacturing. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to be here, and um, I will take a question or two if there's time, if that's acceptable. <laughs>